Anybody here ever like to go to the beach? Raise your hand if you like to go to the beach. The rest of y'all got problems if you don't enjoy going to the beach. So check this out. Tell me if you see a problem with this picture. Anybody see a problem here? Well, it's not that. Check out these houses. Look at this fella right here. Anybody see a problem there? Nobody sees a problem. Okay. Look how close this guy built to the beach. To the water. Like if you ever go to the beach and you're walking down, uh, the, yeah, there are houses over there, you know, stuff like that, like this dude. I don't know which house was built first. I want to say this guy was. Could you imagine being the dude who built this house and one day you go out on your porch drinking your coffee and a dude starts like building a house right in front of you. Look how close this guy is getting to the water. Anytime I go to the desert, anytime I go to Florida and I see where people are building in sandy locations, because I used to own a construction company and uh, we didn't build in sandy locations. I don't even know how that would work. And I know it can be done. I'm just amazed by it. At the same time, you've got to respect that water. Like you've got to... Yeah, you could build a pier or something. I know they drive pilings deep, but that is not what's happening here. Do you see where the water line has been on high tide? Right there. Like right around there. Anybody seeing problems now? How about now? Seeing problems? That happened just a few weeks ago. That's that same house. They built... That, that, uh, down in that area, it's around Port St. Joe, Cape San Blas. They kept on getting greedier. And, uh, I hate to use that word. I don't know what other word to use. We can build closer. We can build closer. We can build closer. And then the ocean started coming at them. That area is known for erosion, yet they decided to build there. And now they're all freaking out. Like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Oh, who would have thought the ocean would have taken away our sand? Like, really? They built these really expensive houses like this there. And the water, they, they got other pictures. I didn't want to wear you out with all these pictures, but you can see other pictures where the concrete's just being, like you can, you can like go underneath of it now, the foundation. This was not built like a pier. This was not designed to be out in the ocean. The last time I knew you could still rent this house, by the way, if you want to get a VRBO, <laughs> VRBO or something. So what do you do? When you build your house in the sand, and the sand shifts, and it's not stable, and you don't have a good foundation. The foundation is very important for a home. It's what everything is on top of. It's not pretty. It's not, it's not, it's not something like, oh, you have the nicest foundation. But whenever that foundation begins to fail, you really care about a foundation. So sand is the problem here. They've built upon sand, where sand's uh, easily eroded in this area of the beach. So how do we fix it? More sand! This here, was, I just screenshot this right off, of, uh, right off of Facebook. So these are great big piles of sand that they had hauled in. This picture was taken off the balcony, the deck of that very house. They're going to fix it. What was the problem here? Sand. How are you going to fix it? More sand! Just so you know, that picture was taken before that picture. Sand ain't working. They got a problem. The foundation was not designed correctly. Right now, there's all kinds of news in that area. Like, is the government going to come in here and help us and fix us? And it's like, why did you build there? If you're going to build there, you have to build a proper foundation. And you wanted to say, yeah, you can't do that. So you see, there's the sand again. So you see the foundation eroding. It was not built, the home was not built upon a proper foundation. And everybody's trying to blame other, if, if, it's, it's just really entertaining. And I hate this for these people. By the way, I really hate this for these people, okay? So don't think I'm delighting in their misfortune. I'm not, but I really enjoyed reading the comments section. People are, like, people are like, who would have thought this would happen? I did. I did. Anybody who knows anything about the erosion of that area would know that that was going to happen. It was the hurricane's fault. You mean to tell me they have hurricanes in Florida? 
when did this start to happen? Hurricanes come through there with rain and wind and waves? This is crazy. I hope they don't have more hurricanes there or this could happen again. Am I wrong? I am wrong, okay. <laughs> yeah. There, there, there's a way to build in that area of the country and people do it and they have special kinds of foundations, things I don't really think about. But this house, that they, they built too close and now the house is failing because the foundation is failing. Which reminds me, which reminds me of this scripture right here. Matthew 7, 24 through 27. This is Jesus speaking. When he says, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. He said, if you, if, if you listen to me, if you obey what I say, if you live the life that I've called you to, it's like building your life on something firm. I'm, I'm the solid rock. Like I won't wash away. I'm here. I'm stable. You, you, you can count on me. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against the house, it won't collapse because it is built, it is built on bedrock. Jesus is being straight up with you here. Like, look, look, rain's coming. Rain's coming. Storms are coming. Sometimes folks want to act like when we follow Jesus, when we build our lives on him, it protects us from all the storms of life. That's not true at all. And that's not recorded in the scriptures. Storms come. Hurricanes come. When those hurricanes come, when those storms come, when the rain starts to, to beat at the house, what is your house built upon? What is the foundation? Jesus is saying, if you've built your life on him and his commandments and his teachings, you're going to be okay. You'll make it through it. The storm's going to be rough. It's not going to be fun. You're going to cry. You're going to go through a lot, of, but you'll be all right if you built the house on him, if you built your life on him, if you built the house on a solid foundation. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand when the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, because they will come. It will collapse with a mighty crash with the mighty crash. So let's talk about this a little bit. Let's talk about foundations. It is so easy to scam people on foundations if you're a builder. Nobody has, most folks have no big opinions on the foundation of their house. Now, for those of you who've been around building, am I, am I right? Well, okay, foundations ain't great. Whenever I was building houses, there was lots of questions about finishes, about window sizes, about uh, countertops and cabinets, and light fixtures, and flooring. And uh, you, know how, you know what they rarely ask me? Even if they ask about concrete. Hey, how much steel are you putting in that footer? The foundation. How much, how much rebar is going in there? They didn't think to ask. They didn't care to ask. They didn't know to ask. It was our job as contractors to, to, to build a firm foundation that, that, that would last because everything is sitting on that foundation. So you have a lot of contractors, frankly, not scary. A lot of contractors will, will, will skip whatever you don't have an opinion. They don't know anything about rebar. Don't put in rebar. I know that's scary, but that's, that, that, that's a reality. The foundation is Everything. And, and, and as, we're, as we're building houses, people have opinions on, on finishes and stuff. And we're building our lives, we have opinions on stuff. And, and, and there's parts of our life, parts of the house, if you will, that we do want to give to Jesus. Jesus gets his own room in our life. It's a nice room. It's got vaulted ceilings. It's got, it's got mahogany floors. It's a beautiful room. And he can stay in that room all that he wants to. That's what we give to Jesus. But he best stay in there. These other parts of our house are for us. Where we like to hang out. Well, we might go into Jesus' room once in a while. But Jesus says, I want to be the foundation of the house. I want to be the foundation of your life. Build everything upon me and what I've taught you. That's what he calls us to. He calls us to making him the foundation where it all begins 
at the end of the day we'll all rest on. Or we can build a better life on sand. The wisdom of the world. Often we talk when we talk about teenagers, you know what you need to talk about those to those teenagers about, don't you? Talk to them about peer pressure. Because teenagers have got a lot of peer pressure. Don't you all know that? Teenagers and peer pressure go hand in hand. Thank God we adults don't have peer pressure. Please give me a break about that. We are in debt up to our eyeballs in America today because of peer pressure. So we think we need to keep up with whoever we need to keep up with. We used to come to peer pressure all the time as adults in America today. We build our houses on things other than Christ. We build our lives on other things other than Christ. We serve these other things. The things we talk about, how we spend our time and money, what love and forgiveness looks like, all these ideas, all these things that Jesus teaches on. We might flirt with them, we might mess with them a little bit, but do we build our lives on Christ and his teachings? Or do we build our lives on something else? Do we build our lives on what the family expects from me? Because I mean, right? Things were expected of us when we were growing up, right? And we best play our part. That's what expect, or, or your neighborhood, or, or your school, or your group of friends. Things were expected of you. I don't know what God's called you to, but, but this is what we expect of you, and you need to build your life on this. You ever seen people completely miserable with their life because they're living the life that somebody else wants them to live? Not the life they've been called to? Well, I'm a dentist because, well, dad's a dentist. I'm not making fun of any dentist that just came to mind. I'm a dentist because, well, dad's a dentist, and, you know, somebody had to carry on the practice, and it was a kind of, you know... I once saw a sushi, I saw a documentary about a sushi chef. The sushi chef. Dad's still alive. And he's, he, want, he might want to do other things, start his own restaurant, but he's, it, I'm supposed to stay here and help dad with his, with his sushi restaurant. Little brother, little brother's doing great. He's doing his own sushi thing and having a great, you know, ex, experimenting and, and growing his business and doing his thing with his own vision. But, but, but yeah, I'm expected to do this, so I'm going to do it. With, with our faith. I, I know the scriptures say that gossip's wrong, but what's what we do? Grandma was a gossip, bless her heart, wasn't it cute? So, so we gossip too. The Bible says a lot about love and forgiveness, but I tend to hold grudges. What are we really building our lives upon? What are you building your life upon? Is it the bedrock of Jesus or is it sand? And sand shifts, don't it? You ever notice that? What the world wants from you today might be different tomorrow. Hey, uh, uh, anybody that's ever been in sales, and I know, this, I know I use this analogy a lot, you can sell a ton of product this week. You best do it next week. This week you'll be applauded. Next week, why don't you sell as much as last week? Well, no, 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 you, you need this every, yeah, yeah, well, we, I know we applaud you, we told you we loved you last week, but this week's a different week. What's the problem here? Things shift, don't they? People's opinion of you shifts, the world shifts, Christ does not shift. Like I said before, it, it's, it's easy to scam uh, homeowners on their foundations. It's, it's a really sad reality, and it's not even that much rebar that you have to put in there, but it's easy to do, and I see it happen so many times, and it's sad. And everything looks fine for a few years. It's interesting, the term we use is structural integrity. Does, does this foundation have structural integrity to hold up this house over the long term? Integrity. Integrity. Interesting word choice there, isn't it? Integrity. And you can build a beautiful house on a poor foundation. I mean, you saw that house there, right? Sweet house. And the com part of the comment section was, we love vacationing there. It's so beautiful. The views are wonderful. And you see the house. It's that pretty green color, I don't know, whatever. It's, it's a nice house. Great. And you can build a beautiful house on a poor foundation. But eventually, the cracks will show. Eventually, 
the cracks will show and you'll begin to see problems and it will break down. Early on in my career, while we were trying to build our construction business, I, I was a painter. I just went and painted in a lot of places. And I was called into to a house I won't name, a neighborhood I won't name, and that neighborhood ha has, has poor soil, and uh, the foundations are not, uh, that were put in are not meeting the need for that soil. Let's put it like that. So the houses are shifting a bunch. Anybody ever seen that with a house? I was called, hey, painter. Uh, if you come in, and you see all these cracks in my drywall? Can you fix those and paint them? Absolutely, I can. So I came in and said, a few guys come in. We didn't come in and mud it, drywall, tape it even, do the real good job. Then paint it. And then we go through the house. And, and, and we got that part done. Now we're in another part of the house. The next day after lunch, we're looking. It's cracking again. I can't, I can't, I can't cover it up. I mean, I can paint it. And I can fix it for a day or two, but the cracks are there and the cracks are continuing to grow and there's nothing I can do as a painter. You need to fix the foundation. You can fix the foundation. You can build a beautiful house, but eventually the cracks will show. It's easy to put pictures of a beautiful house or a beautiful life on Facebook, but at the end of the day, what's really holding everything up? What's really holding everything up? Is it Christ? Is he holding up your life whenever the storms come? Or is it the other things that we choose to base our lives upon? A lot of folks uh, choose to build lives without, without following Jesus or his, uh, or his commandments. And they, and they can build beautiful, wonderful lives until the signs of stress and failure come. Because rain will come. Rain, I don't care how much faith you have. Storms will come. You'll get that phone call that changes everything. You'll get the medical report that changes everything. The friend that said that they can't, that, that, would, never, uh, that would, would never turn on you, turns on you. Things that you thought would never happen, happen. That's why they're called storms. They're just, they come at you fast and quick and it just wrecks things. At the end of the day, what are you building your life on? The ways of the world shift. But Jesus, Jesus has never, ever let me down. Even when I was mad at him, he's never let me down. He's always been who he said he would always be. Well, it's too late, Josh. I built my life on sand, I guess. Fine, there it is. The whole thing's built, and now I can't do anything. That's not true. You can still repair and work on foundations. Bringing in more sand, that ain't gonna help. <laughs> Isn't that true, though? We try to fix our lives sometimes with the same mistakes we've already made. The, 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 we have our favorite habits, our favorite sins. Uh, you know what a sign of insanity is? A sign of insanity is that you do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result the next time. But you've done this, right? We've all done this. We, we try the same thing over and over, and maybe it'll work this time. Maybe this will change him. This, this last time. We, we try the same thing over and over again. We'll bring in more sand to our lives. Maybe if I hold a grudge a little bit longer this time at work, maybe if I really cuss them out good at work this time, maybe they'll capitulate. Maybe, maybe if I lose my patience with the kids one more time, this will be the time they're like, Dad really does care and he loves us and we're going to obey him. We keep on with the same sand. And, and in medical terms, I'm not saying you're insane. I'm not saying I'm insane. You may say I'm insane. I'm not going to disagree with you. But it's a sign of, of insanity. Look, you can fix the foundation, but the foundation has to be Jesus. He, he's the only hope we have. If we build our lives upon him and his teachings, we'll be able to weather the storms of life. We'll be able to weather, weather the rain, the bad news, the phone calls, uh, the, the diagnosis, you know, the job loss, whatever comes our way, 
we'll be able to handle it. It won't be easy. It won't be pretty, but we'll be able to make it through. We'll be able to make it through. And even if the house is halfway torn down, you can always rebuild because the foundation is there. You have something to build back upon. My encouragement for you this week, my question for you this week, is what are you building your life upon? What are you building your life upon? I don't, I don't mean giving Jesus a room of your house or even his own pool house. Well, sometimes we like to compartmentalize, compartmentalize our lives. And Jesus can stay over there and he can be a big part of our life, but we're not going to build our life on him. What have you really built your life upon? And what would it look like for you to, 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 to work on that foundation? What would it look like for you this week, this year, to really say, you know, okay, if, if I'm building my life with Jesus as the foundation, how would my life look different? What do I need to do? What would that look like? Be honest in your prayers this week with, with, with the Lord as you ask him that. Let's pray. God, we love you for being a God who never changes. We thank you for being God who never changes. We love you for a lot of reasons. We thank you for, for hearing us, for hearing our prayers. We thank you for showing us great mercy. Father, sometimes we can make a mess of things. Sometimes we, we, we build on sand. Sometimes we make things really important that we shouldn't make important. Sometimes we lose our focus on you. Forgive us. But thanks for loving us anyhow. Sometimes we look at our life and be like, what a mess I made here. I should have not built my life on this. But yet you say it's not over. Yet you can redeem us. Yet we can build again with you. Thanks for never giving up on us. Thank you for loving us. And help us to be honest with ourselves over this next week, over this next year, over our lifetime, about what we're really building our lives upon and around. It's in the holy and matchless name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.